Good evening and welcome back to Let's Play The Witcher 2. When we left off last time, we cleared out the mines and we got our Dwarven Immortal. Hooray! So, one ingredient down, three to go. Uh, for our next ingredient, I think we're going to go talk to Philippa. We've got this uh, hunting magic one. Talk to Philippa at her home. So let's do that. Her home is pretty close, if I remember right. Oh, she's over here. So what? Go along here and then through here. Okay. Is this the cut through I wanted? Yes. Excuse me, chickens. Alright, yeah, this is it. Ooh! Ooh, what's going on in there? He's just gonna open in on him? Obviously she's kinda busy, Geralt. Okay, it wasn't what I expected. You should knock. That would be polite. What is it, Witcher? Who is that girl? What does it matter? A leashed sorceress. A charming expression. Do you also use muzzles? Leash means a connection between a sorceress and her assistant. An unfortunate term, I admit, but it explains how things are. Cynthia can tap my power, use my spells. She's a conduit. And she's learning along the way. Yeah, why do you care, girl? convenient, and except for the name, not derisive at all. But you're not here to talk about Cynthia. Yeah, we got other things going on. So, yeah, I want all of this. Uh, let's start. A sorceress like you ought to know bundles about the wild hunt. A sorceress's knowledge has nothing to do with superstition. It's not a superstition. It's not a superstition. True. The phenomenon seems to exist. I want to know everything there is to know about it. It's strictly atmospheric. It doesn't interest me. Just as whirlwinds, whirlpools, and snowfalls do not interest me. Mm, fair enough. All right. So probably there's some sorceresses who do care, or... Maybe, I don't know, historians or researchers or whatever. But not her. You know anything about Lethal? Have you heard about a witcher's school? Apparently the viper's their sign. No. Why do you ask? The Kingslayer wears a medallion adorned with a viper. Pretentious and childish for my taste. He can't be very smart. You may well be underestimating him. Is what they say true? Did Saskia kill a dragon? Prince Stennis decorated her for it at the court in Vengerberg. So it appears to be true. Hmm. If you want to know the details, talk to Biggerhorn. Apparently he witnessed it. All right. Not like she's going to tell me, but we'll ask. How is it that King Radovid's court sorceress and advisor is supporting rebellion in Edirne? This has grown into more than a simple rebellion, Witcher. Prince Stennis' arrival here confirms Saskia's right to represent Edirne. I'm sure he didn't mean it to. For Edirne, but for the Pontar Valley. Even Prince Stennis considers you rebels. He hasn't moved against you because war with Kedwin hangs by a thread. Why are you here, Sorceress of Tredegor? It is my duty. If Henselt occupies the Pontar Valley, Redania and Temeria will respond strongly. The North will disintegrate. Its unity gone. A dark scenario that is nevertheless avoidable, provided Saskia is successful and wins the Valley's independence. Even if she thwarts Henselt, there'll be no independence without agreement from Redania and Temeria. And I can't imagine Temeria Stannis will agree to it. Temeria's plans melted away with Foltest's death. Redania's ruler is unpredictable, but even he'll have to respect a victory. I'm here to make this victory a fact. What about Stannis, though? All right. I found an immortel. Excellent. I actually found more than one, so if you need extras. The lighting's kind of weird in her room. Oh, I think it's coming in from the window. That's what it is. Okay, there's other things too, though. Discuss something. Yes, I did. Uh, do you know anything about this? I'm looking for Triss. Letho forced her to teleport near Vergen. Can you track the trails or something? Let's kill her. Perhaps Demavens, too. Will you help me find her? Certainly. We sorceresses must stick together. We have too many enemies. And she's in your Just lodge, so. You through Sheila de Tanzerville's megascope while in Flotsam. And I haven't heard from her since. 
can you... What about Sheila? Where'd she go? The megascope responds to a person's aura. If I had something of hers, I could find her. You were close to her. Maybe you have something. Do I? No, I don't have anything. Hmm. Not good. Wait. A local drunkard claims he saw a redhead fall out of the sky. This could be a lead. All right. I... She's not the only redhead, and drunkards aren't the most reliable, but, I mean, fall out of the sky, it's possible. If she teleported kind of erratically. Yennefer teleported once and fell into the sea. Could happen. I never heard of flying women before. Perhaps they're just drunken delusions. It's possible, however, that an unstable teleport ejected Triss near the town. As it's our only lead, I'll talk to this drunkard. Do you know him? I'm not used to associating with <laughs> drunkards. But you'll likely find him in the inn. I'll look for him Thank there. You. Come back it's as soon something. as you learn anything. You know, and she could have investigated that lead herself, but I have a feeling she was probably like, mm, now Geralt will be interested. We'll just let him do it. We'll just drop the information in front of him, dangle it there, and he'll pick up the thread and go take care of that. I can do other things. You wanted to discuss something? Yes. So, finally. Uh, actually, yeah. At the council, you mentioned artifacts were needed to undo the curse. Hmm. But I can't look for them now. I can do that. Yeah. Why? I have my reasons. Wow, why wouldn't I? Tell me something. Huh. I... Actually, I didn't even notice that. Did you notice? Not all the ghosts were aggressive. Yes. Most just disappeared when they touched the aura of a living person. I think the curse corrupts the ghosts of the Fallen and turns them into Draugrs. Is that the Witch's professional name for wraiths? Draugrs are demons of war. They arise at sites of exceptionally vicious, bloody battles. Their bloodlust and hatred in condensed form. Can you kill them by conventional means? A silver sword is enough for a Draugr. But as long as the curse remains active, new ones will arise. The soldier's ghosts are the key. If I could turn the tide of the battle... For that, you'll need symbols of war belonging to those who fell in battle. Hatred, death, courage, and faith. All artifacts must be magically active and connected to the fallen, or they won't lure the ghosts. Okay. Right. I'll look around. Finding two will be enough. Get the symbols of hatred and death and leave the rest to me. I'd prefer courage and faith. Yeah. Don't fuss. <laughs> I'll see what I can do. Cecil seems to know a lot about the area. I would most like to find all of them, so I will do my best. What happened here three years ago? Henselt attacked Edern, but met his match. Nobody won that war. Sabrina Glefisig got into a conflict with the commander-in-chief of the Kedweni forces, and this led to both armies being rooted. Fireballs turned the battlefield into a flaming tomb. Henselt accused Sabrina of using a forbidden weapon. So what happened to her? And Sabrina cursed Henselt. I think so. I suspect the curse got out of hand because of the circumstances. Circumstances? The stars weren't right, wrong phase of the moon. There's always an excuse for simple bungling. She placed the curse while burning at the sun. Ah, well, okay. Her hands and feet nailed to a wagon wheel. I'd say she did a good job considering. Yeah. Know anything about blood curses? Do you? We're dealing with a fourth level curse, also known as the curse of the Archmistress. Well, well, I'm impressed. Thing is, until now I thought it was only a myth. That such a curse couldn't be cast. Well, huh? you thought wrong. There are six confirmed cases of this curse being inflicted. What happened in the other what about cases? Confirmed cases of it being lifted. One. Achieved by a team of sorcerers led by Archmistress Francesca Finderbear, hence the curse's other name. Sabrina Glevesig was on the team. So she knew all about how to curse it, huh? That's not all. The curse investigated by Francesca and Sabrina was designed to end the Tyson dynasty, the rulers of Kovir. They were cursed by Scarlet Rodelega, a complete madman, but very talented. An eclipse and wraiths also accompanied his curse. So Sabrina's curse is just a knockoff Rodelega. Exactly. Hmm. Can Francesca's experience help us? Certainly. I know the symbols and the workings of the curse thanks to her. That's handy. All right. Care to explain? I'm the one risking my neck. You'll have to relive the battle and change its course at the right moment. I don't know exactly what will happen. Nobody does. Huh. I'll look for those artifacts. So when we're changing what happens at the right moment, it's it's not impacting how that it's not like time magic impacting how the battle actually went, right? It's just 
impacting these ghosts' perceptions of it, allowing them to find peace and move on. I'm good for now. I'll let you know when I learn something. All right, but I'm not actually done. You wanted to discuss something. Yes. I also want you to know... You said we'd need a magical object to cure Saskia. Any ideas where I might start looking? Magical items do not grow on trees, as you know. Luckily, this area has a long history. There's the Battle of Wraiths, the site of Sabrina Glevesig's death and suffering, the abandoned mines. I was hoping you'd be specific. I won't ask you to traipse around with a divining rod, but please try to be a little inventive. Ask the locals, that's always a good place to start. I dare say Alderman Burden knows every last stone in the area. Maybe you should see him. Fair point. I can't help but like her. She's extremely competent. She knows what she's about. Oh, and now it's raining. Run for cover! Ooh, look at all these little quest arrows. Okay, so I want to talk... Oh, because it's like she said talk to the local people. Uh, I was hoping it would take me specifically to Cecil, but this will do too. He's not far. He's right here. It is taking me to Cecil, so I can talk to Cecil and I can talk to Scalen and whoever this is. Maybe I should even save Cecil for last because he'll probably know the most. So let's see what everybody else has to say first. All right. Um... So if I cut through here and then go down and like over, okay, so here sharply south. And then, yeah, go as I'm going. And is it down here that I want, or am I getting off track? No, I'm about to go the wrong way. Don't do it. Enjoying a little bit of rain? Refreshing? Are you someone I need to talk to, or do I need to actually go inside? Okay. I think I might need to go inside. Let's go inside. Did I, did I see this before? It's not ringing any bells. I probably did, and I just don't remember. But Okay, and it's not where I need to be at all. Is it you? That I'm having some trouble... Eh. Why am I having trouble with you? to talk to. And why is it so hard to talk to this one guy? Not you. The only one I can easily talk to. Is it like the wrong time of day? Yeah, let's just give it a little time. There. Greetings. Not one of these folks. Not the little girl. With I do. Okay, I finally talked to you and you were useless. Frustrating. So, what am I looking for then?
Maybe I do just need to go talk to Cecil and be less confusing. I'm not achieving anything this way. All right. We'll find Cecil. Oh, a witcher. Where's he from here? And he's not even here. Cecil, are you lurking about somewhere in your house? Please? Oh, thank goodness. Alright. Need to talk to you. So. Hmm. Saskia needs help, Cecil. Philippa can produce an antidote, but she needs a magic artifact to do that. Would you like a fern and a dancing worm to go with it? Listen, I don't know about magic, but there is a place... As long as I can remember, it's been of interest to sorcerers. They say it's a very strong intersection. Look for magic there. All right, where is where it? Exactly is there. Seek out the ruins in the forest beyond Bergen. There's a place of power there. You can't miss it. All righty. Will do. A glum. Saskia's a tough girl. She'll bounce back. I sure hope she does. Keep your head up. Thanks, Cecil. No, Witcher. I thank you. Save that lass, and you'll save my time. I will do everything I can. Hang on, though. We're not done. I also need to know... Cecil, do you know anyone who fought in the war three years ago? I did. Yeah? Did you fight here at Vergen? Of course. Philippa claims you know a bit about the battle. That old kook insult. Called king by some. Thought that Adernians were bumpkins who'd ship bricks as soon as his troops crossed the river. Why did he attack Edern? According to Hensult, Upper Edern is the ancient legacy of the Kedwini crown. And must be returned to the mother country. Brazen farter. He thought it'd be that easy pickings. Brazen farter had a point. If you read some history, you'll know that 300 years ago, this land belonged to Kedwin. But now it's now. It's not 300 years ago. 700 years ago, the elves reigned here. And a million years ago, these lands were the domain of the worms. If things weren't that way, every king could invade a neighboring land and claim his right to do so because an ancestor took a dump there. Yeah, I think All it depends right. more on what the people and who live there the want for themselves. Better. What then? He rolled in, got hammered, and rolled out. Cecil <laughs> doesn't help me much. It wasn't a battle. It was a slaughter. If I try speaking of it, I'll see it all again. I don't want Okay, it's all right. The ghosts of the fallen fight in the mist. They turn into horrible creatures called Draugrs. Edernians, Kedweni, men, elves, and dwarves, too. Bloody hell. No peace even after death. Yeah, we gotta find a way to bring it to, to him. Help them. But I need to know more about the battle. Well, I don't want to traumatize yeah. Cecil to do it. Listen, a beautiful day that grew hot later. Very hot. When Vandergrift attacked in the afternoon, he sent the Dun Banner at the fore. Many of our lads shit themselves at the mere sight of their standard. But we had a surprise of our own. Under the cover of night, we prepared fire pits. Our archers lit them up at the right moment. I still can't believe we managed to fool their scouts. If it wasn't for the ambush, we wouldn't be speaking today. They likely wouldn't be in Upper Edern at all. We decimated the Dunbanner, but that was only the beginning. Selkirk was our commander. Everywhere he appeared, the Kedwenis gave ground. He wreaked havoc among them. Hearts rose at the mere sight of his armor. Then, Vandergrift himself entered the fray. Selkirk met him in the middle of the field. In the end, Vandergrift killed Selkirk. A terrible death that sent the Adernian ranks into disarray. I thought it was the end of us. Then the sky fell, as if the stars themselves had decided to avenge the death of a great knight. Fire covered the battlefield. Nobody sought the enemy. They were all looking for somewhere to flee. Yes, there were no more friends and enemies. Only the living and the dead. They say it was the doing of a Kidwenny sorceress who wanted revenge on Vandergrift. Could be true, as Henseld had her executed right after the battle. Hmm. So. You captured the Dunbanner standard? 
Ensel's choice troops, and not a one survived. The visitor sent them to their deaths. Refused to give them reinforcements. He was a monster in human form. The visitor? The men of the Dun were real swaggerers. Killed a lot of our lads, but for every Dunner, there were seven Adernians. They had no chance. Aye, we captured their standard. We buried what was left of them in the crypts beyond Vergen. Their standard lies with them. Worthy foes are to be respected, even in death. I'm gonna need to, going to take that, that standard. standard. So. You saw the Kidwennies cross the river? From afar. I saw Vandegrift leading 4,000 heavily armed men. Many a heart sank when we saw the elite bearheads or the armored banners from Adkarig. The Dun banner was in the middle. Veterans of Brenner. As soon as he set foot on Adernian land, Vandegrift climbed a hill and surveyed the area, as if it was his fief. Son of a bitch was as sure of himself as ever. Upon spying him, <laughs> I remember the dwarves all dropped their trousers and showed him their asses. Then Selkirk stepped out in front of us. His white armor shone in the sun. We were afraid a kid Winnie Arbalist would shoot him, but they too stood as if frozen. And Selkirk just looked at them and bowed ever so slightly. So Selkirk was undoubtedly the hero. Do we need to dress in his armor and defeat like the ghost of Grant Vandegrift or whatever? Would that change the tide of the battle? Is that what we need to do? Remember anything from before the battle? As if it was yesterday. Hensolt's troops crossed the Pontar the third day after the autumn equinox. Edon had good spies, so we were ready for them, and Selkirk lined up our troops along the hills. Our hearts rose at the sight of the banners of Wengerberg, Aldersburg, and Gullet fluttering in the wind. Knights and armored infantry side by side in our ranks. Even the peasants had their regiments. The dwarves were on the left flank. Over five thousand strong we were. Nobody caring about race or background. Like never before. Only King Demavend was missing. But he must have had more important business than defending his country. So then... Did you see the duel between Selkirk and Vandergrift? I stood half a furlong from them. Never seen a fight like it. Probably never will again. They'd already met once at a jousting tournament in Ardkareg. Selkirk won there. He beat on the visitor so hard he broke his sword. Oh, okay. Selkirk was a That's who the visitor is. The last of his breed. Vandergrift was so pissed off after that tournament he hanged the smith who made his sword and ordered a special one. From a saucer. There's no need to hang anybody. He cut down Selkirk with that new sword. Vandergrift is dead. What happened to his sword? Saskia's got it. Hmm. Good thing, too. Only her hand can tame the hatred enchanted in that sword. Hatred, the though. Battle, we might need the that. The flames abated. The scavengers came. They stole everything. Imagine. Not a single keepsaker Selkirk in the whole of Edon. His brother babbles something about a gauntlet, but... He's a lying dog. Are you sure he's lying? Thanks, Cecil. That was helpful. I think I know what I need to lift the curse now. Madam Eilhart claims you need four symbols. The standard symbolizes death. Vandegrift's sword stands for hatred. What about the other two? Probably that gauntlet. I have a feeling Philippa has a handle on the rest. Here's hoping you're right. All right. Well, we got some excellent information out of him. Definitely helpful. Wait for events to unfold. Alright then. So what do we want to do now? We do need to kill some harpies. They nest on inaccessible rocky ledges. I do need to get some uh, harpy traps. Do I have any? I'm not positive that I do. With flickering heart, go to the burned village or examine the corpses. Oh, this is the one with um, Elias to determine what's happening. I am curious about that. Let's follow that one for a little bit. So, that is outside the town, right? Yeah. And so if we go, like, up here, then down through that one and over to that one, up some stairs, and, like, maybe there. Let's try it. Thank <laughs> you. 
clad in hues of green amidst we heard that one before oh this isn't how to get over there though I gotta go down here and through the gate proper there we go oh and everybody's out and about now hello my pentacles intrigue you indeed I'd like to see them up close let's start with introductions then I'm Felicia Corey and you're Geralt of Rivia you know me right off eh why the surprise face I heard about you in school whether you like it or not, you're a hero of contemporary history. Oh. And of the love stories we read beneath our blanket. Uh-huh. You studied at Aratusa? Yes. Though I'm still to finish my portion and fetish internship, which is why I'm here. You need help with that? You're doing it under Philippa Eilhart's watchful eye. Anyway, I can help you. Help from a hero of our readers? Now that's drawing on sources for Rhea. I'd be grateful. The locals are reluctant to buy magic items, and I really need to pass. Let's see what I can do. You know that I enjoy... Oh, she's the hairstylist helping out sorceresses. So, um... Alright, what you got? Prionia. No, does she have... Uh, what did I need? Scleroderm? I mean, I could probably find some, but... Bunch of diagrams. Lure of the Temptress. Oh, it's a succubi book. Well, that'd be handy to have. Yeah, we want all the books, right? So, let's go ahead. How to kill a bulvore. That'll be good. We already killed it, but it said one out of three, so I'm sure there's going to be more. Neckers in the mist of trolls and trolling. I think we did and she does have the scleroderm. 44? I'll just buy my own. I'm cheap. The Immortelle. Ooh, will that tell me ways to use? Try it. It's a waste of money if not, but whatever. Ooh, knowledge on drugs. All right. I just bought a lot of stuff from you, so that should help. And I will probably buy more, or sell more in just a minute here but let's look at what we just got books the legendary accursed the drog is a mythical creature issuing straight from ancient legends of heroes and their epic deeds when a hero descends into a fiery hell to rescue his beloved or when he seeks to avenge his father's death the drog is often his opponent is it drog or more like drog or i don't know drog is what i'm going with why are poets so keen to cast this monster as the arch enemy well, as a wraith, the drog fits well into any dark story of a curse or vengeance from the world beyond. Described variously, always as terrifying, its true appearance remains unknown. It is a powerful creature, a prince of the damned, thus making an ideal villain. Alright, tell me about the Immortelle. The dwarven Immortelle is called the Devil's Tale by the dwarves themselves, and Fainicare, something like that, that is the sun's blood by the elves. The plant has powerful medicinal properties, but is relatively unknown and extremely rare. According to Alvin legend, an archer once managed to pierce the sun with an arrow. The sun's blood dripped from the sky, sinking into the ground so deeply that it penetrated ancient hollows in the rock. This herb may today be found in places where the blood settled. That account may or may not be apocryphal, but it's a fact that the Immortal is sought after as an ingredient for antidotes and beauty elixirs. It grows in caves and old mines, for it does not require sunlight, and that's why it is described as dwarven. Alright. How to kill a bulvore? The bulvore can be compared to a heap of muscles contained within a flexible yet durable hide. It has the head of a buffalo, yet its mouth is filled with sharp teeth perfectly suited to rending flesh. Bulvores are post-conjunction beasts. Visible marks of chaos include the creature's horns and the vestigial, largely immovable limbs that cover its body. Excellent. Lure of the Temptress. The succubus, often mistakenly believed to be a higher vampire, is a post-conjunction creature. Therefore, a visitor from another world trapped in our reality. The beast has the form of a comely female with hooves instead of feet. However, her partial animal appearance has no meaning for the use the monster entices like a consummate temptress. Those seduced by a succubus lose their heads, as if it was a woman. Oh, oh, lose their heads as like they're so in love or whatever. And the beast accepts all attentions, leading the young men to ruin, draining their life force. 
One seduced by a succubus becomes melancholic, loses appetite and all interest in the world. Bereft of strength, he moons around with a pale face and sighs heavily. He also reeks of sulfur, as the smell permeates him when he mates with the beastie. To cure him of this fatal addiction, one should acquaint him with pleasant doward lassies and treat him to cold decoctions. <laughs> Goodness. Okay. Well, we should probably sell her some stuff or we're going to end up over encumbered again. What do we want to give you? You can have this ring. And apparently this medallion is junk, but it seems like it should be cool. I'm keeping it for right now. It's probably nothing if it's in junk, but I just want it to be something good. I guess we'll keep the foam part. It's a half pound. Um, do I actually want to sell anything here? I have 31 cloth. That's a lot of cloth. Some of that can go. Yeah, that'll do. sell some of these so we at least make money off them. Nine of them. I should probably sell some of these hides too. They're heavy. I got 12 pounds of it. Mm, we'll see. 28. 28 pounds of iron ore. I really need to craft some stuff with that. 30 pounds of leather. Oh, good grief. All right, that'll do for now. Who else hangs out here? Ebenezer? Wait, Ebenezer Zigrin did it say? You are a relation of Yarpin's? What are you guys talking about? Claim she's a virgin, and nobody questions her virtue. They just follow her to war, to death. What do you say to that? You've answered your own question. Humans follow adventure, get drunk on ideas, and while drunk, have no doubts. They flee their everyday lives and plunge into dreams. Exactly. The rich and the poor alike. And not just humans at that. Yeah, what about the dwarves? Great day. A bear or what? What? <laughs> We had a basilisk in the basement. You repair armor, right? Oh, hey. Right. You work just for your elves? Not just. You don't say much, do you? And they said you're rubbish. <laughs> Alright, let's see about some crafting. So then, I want to make some harpy traps, because we're going to be coming up against some. Oh, all that precious silver I worked so hard for. Okay, I need the harpy trap, I know that. But first, if I wanted to make a better silver sword... What sword do I have right now? So it's really haunted. Sword of Care Morhen, 16 to 25. Okay. And so he can make me. Come here, you. I mean, it's a bit better, but it's not that exciting still. Hmm. Maybe I should go ahead and just make some of these harpy traps that I will need. Ugh, I don't want to commit to it just yet. I'm nervous. And hide armor. Well, it's just reinforcement, though. We'll wait, we'll wait. They truly believe in the afterlife after seeing that. How do such places come to Oh! Another traveler. From where? Wait, let me guess. Hmm. From Tamaria. Had it at the tip of my tongue. <laughs> so, what brings you to Bergen? Wait, I know. Tell me. Business. <laughs> Just what I thought. And you're a witcher. Well, well. We don't often see witches here. Um, what do witches do anyway? You've never heard of a witcher? Oh, I have a problem with my boyfriend. Well, generally not that sort of problem, but... His entrails strewn on the porch and his head a few pieces Geralt, be nice. Because those are the kind of problems I solve. Alright, what does she sell? You're the one who very non-specifically said, we solve problems. To this 
kind of silly sort of gal, so what was she to make of that? I don't want to use, I want to talk to you. Can I talk to you? Ah, uh, I think she's busy. How's it going over here? Oh, Witcher, I'm glad I found you. I've got something for you. You do? We know each other. So surprised by a stranger bearing gifts. Ah, ye humans, egotistical barbarians ye are. <laughs> I was in Flotsam when the massacre started. Oh. Just accept it. I would take no for an answer. Well, thank you. Thanks. What did we get? Oh, an axe. I appreciate the thought, and that's nice, but you just gave me five pounds of stuff that I'm not going to use. It's okay. He meant well. And I'm glad that at least someone got out, you know? Flotsam was pretty horrible. Hello. Hello. What's going on over here? It's in the middle of the duck. Not much, eh? Excuse me, child. Alright, we'll go around this way then. Thank you. Okay, let's get back to what I was actually attempting to do. I got myself very very sidetracked just talking to people. Let's go drink, friends. I'm gonna get as drunk as a lord. Why is that? They stole it. The plowing bird stole, stole it. what? My dream is gone. Maybe I can help you. And then what's the grin for? Night after night, I dreamed of my dead wife for years. Let's go for some liquor. Drinks on me. Well, hang on. What's going on? I can't. I can't talk to any of ya. All right. Okay, so where do I need to actually get to from here? Over here. Oh, so just right up the bend. We're nearly there. Just be ready. What's this? I know it's the wrong way, but it's shiny and it caught my attention. Bright colors. Hello? Greetings, Batgirl. I'm glad to see you again. Again. Plotsam? Oh, you were one of the ones in the tower. How these things work. I'll never forget that. Oh, unimportant. Needless to say, I'm deeply indebted. I am just happy to have helped. Sorry. No need to be. But I feel I should pay you back some. No, you don't have to. I started a new here, you know. I hope things work out that well for you. Builds confidence. Sure, I can't tempt you with something. Okay, so in the first game, I was tempted all over the place. I let myself be. I think that's pretty true to Geralt. Especially the earlier stories. Temptation comes along, he's like, oh, okay. Um, but now at this point, where he's remembering Yennefer, and he's remembering where there was this woman who meant enough to him that he trailed grimly on after the wild hunt, filled with determination to get her back, I feel like, I don't know, he might step back a bit and just kind of wait. Would he wait? Is there a point to waiting and remaining faithful if you don't quite... I like Yennefer, and I want to see him end up with Yennefer. She's the person that he chose for himself. But would he, at this point, refrain from anything along the way? I don't think he would, if we consider, um, what was her name? Fringilla Vigo. You know, he's on the quest. It's looking kind of bleak. He's not really sure where to go. And although Game has made it out like he's in this relationship with Triss, I dis I deliberately did not choose that in The Witcher 1. I didn't make any kind of commitment to her, and I took all the opportunities I could. I think... Yeah, I think he would go ahead and go for it. Wait a minute. Is this what I think it is? <laughs> it is if you want it to be. We elves might seem strange by your standards. You saved my life. A bit of joy as recompense is not too much to... Is it joyful for you as well, though? I mean, that's not why I saved you. I don't know, what's the better choice? I kind of feel like... I'm worried by her phrasing. Like, is she she feels indebted to him. Is this something that she wants to do, or is she just throwing it out there like, well, it's I don't have much to give, but I could give him that. Don't be harsh with her, Geralt. Be nice. That's not necessary. As you wish. Though you realize I'll not offer again. 
Well, I wasn't totally confident that you were offering as something that you were excited about and into, so I think this is the better way to go. Also, what's in here? Nobody? Okay. Maybe it's just her house. And that's just her. She's... I mean, I wish her well with her store, but she's kind of chosen a terrible spot for it. She's not really along the beaten path, you know? Maybe there wasn't a good spot within the city to do it. Okay. Let's not just charge into our death. This is where we need to go. Got some more scleroderm, that's handy. We will end up needing more bryonia as well. All right, burned remains. Let's see what we can find. Other than just herbs, there are a lot of herbs. Which is useful, but not what we're really here for. Oop, 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 get the wolfsbane, the white myrtle, all the stuff. There's something... What's going on there? All right, I gotta, I gotta see what that's all about. Just in case it's hostiles. It's elves, though. You guys won't attack me, right? What are y'all doing here? Oh, you're just keeping an eye out on things. Got it. What? Just, just talking. Nobody wants you here. Okay. Greetings. All right, well, I will leave you guys to it then. Strange. I smell sulfur. Oh? Well, well. And we just read about sulfur smell. Succubus, and it is young men. We're dealing with the succubus here, guys. All right. And now we need to go... Where? What's this? All the way up there? What's the best way to get there? I'll probably, yeah, like through here, and then through here. And a lot of things are going to try to eat me on the way. Or I'll run into Kedwini forces. Well, that's what's got to be done, right? Okay, am I going the right way here? It says I'm pointed directly at where I need to be. This isn't a cut through, though. And I don't think that's actually a little trail that I can follow. No, I think it was telling me, go past these guys. And loop around. No, it's not, though. It's really not. Look at, look at my mini-map. It seems like I should be able to go through here. I can't. Well, fine. We'll loop around. Is this going to take me in the total wrong direction? No, it looks like it'll all end up working out. It places a power everywhere around here, huh? Oh, that can't be good. Wonder how many more. Oh, whoops. Oh, boy. <laughs> well. Wonderful. <laughs> Oh boy, and how far back am I now? Okay, I'm over here. That's not too terrible. Strange. I smell sulfur. All right, that's probably a good place then. I'll go ahead and wind the episode down here. Please like and subscribe if you've enjoyed this. Come back and next time we will see if we can find a way to complete this quest without having to run through 
all of the, the field of wraiths. You know, I'm sure there is a way. Because we were able to come out, like, back here. This is the lake where those guys attacked me, right? And I ran all over like crazy here because I didn't know where to go to escape them. It looks like it might hook up there. We'll try that. 